I started off by asking myself this question. If I knew how the market might open tomorrow, what would I do? Put it all on red? No. So I spent two years doing the math and triangulation until I was satisfied. I had been doing directional trading during that time and I had some great wins and some losses. I wanted to even things out a little bit more, so I started looking at different trading strategies. I have a few which I refer to as SPY T trading. We have SPY T A, SPY T B, and this video is about SPY T C. Personally, I think the SPY T C is the easiest of the three to trade. As many of you know, the SPY T trading method has three parts. First, the overnight swing trade, which is where we buy options at the close and we sell them in the morning. It's a short term trade. Next is the two to one option ratio, which I'll talk about for SPY T in a few moments. And then of course, the third part is the indicator. Now you can use any indicator you want. I prefer to use SPY tomorrow, but you can use any indicator or be counter to the indicators. Sometimes there is big news coming in the morning and everybody's saying, hey, it's gonna go up and you just think, you know what, it's gonna go down. I generally don't do that because I like to be consistent. I let SPY tomorrow tell me whether it's up or down, even if I have a bad feeling about it, because I don't wanna continuously second guess myself or even sabotage myself. I know once in a while, spy tomorrow, maybe 25% of the time could be wrong, but I'm prepared and I prepare for those up days, I prepare for those down days, I prepare to be right and wrong because all of those things will happen. Spy tomorrow does one thing, it measures the pressure at the end of the day, which often correlates to how the market might open the next morning, but you never know, anything could happen overnight, so we need to be prepared. The SPY TC trade is very similar to the SPY TB trade. However, we go deeper into the money and we look for that two to one ratio. If SPY tomorrow or your indicator says it's going to be up, look for a call and then look for a put next to it about half the price. This is also helpful during these volatile times because there's just a little bit less theta to deal with, which leads me to some things we need to look out for. When trading options, there are always risks and concepts to consider, and SPY T trading is no different. If you're having trouble with your SPY T trades, it certainly can happen, especially during times like these when volatility is really high and thetas get really high too. That's the time decay. Now, generally, I like to have my expirations between four and seven days, and it's worked out pretty well, but that's usually when the VIX is sitting somewhere in the 20s. When we get above 30. Let me tell you, that volatility in the theta can just crush those premiums overnight. So you might want to consider moving out a little bit more, maybe 7 to 14 days. Protect yourself and when the volatility comes back down, you can move those expirations back. And if volatility gets really, really low, well then you can experiment with maybe 1 to 3 day expirations. But start off with small position sizes. Yeah, be careful in these highly volatile markets. Look, it's all math and we're trying to take advantage of opportunities presented to us and of course protect ourselves when things don't go our way. The SPY tomorrow indicator, it tells us one thing and it does it well. It shows us what the pressure is at the end of the day in the market, which often correlates to how the market might open during that first half hour the next day. However, anything could happen overnight, so we need to be prepared. I am excited that I have videos coming up comparing the SPY T A, B, and C, as well as the straddle and directional trading, real world situations, what happened when we bought it at night, and what happens in the morning. That's gonna be fun. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next upload, and I'll see you in the next video.